Mark, back to the league this week. Um, how clinical do you need to be? Uh, we need to be uh, ruthless. Um, when we get opportunities, we need to make sure that we, we, we put games to bed. Uh, but we have to pay full respect to our opposition. It's, like I've always said, the hardest thing to do is win a game of football because you have 11 plus players trying to stop you do that. Plus you have good coaches, good managers trying to come up with things for them to win games. So it's really difficult. But when we do get chances like we did last week, we have to make sure we kill the game off. And obviously this comes in between the FA Cup replay and the original game against Carlisle. But I suppose you just have to, as you always say, it's about the next game, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, well, listen, we're looking forward to our schedule. We've got a lot of games coming up in December, but the, but the boys are fit, they're young, they're desperate to play games, so we're not too worried about it. We'll we'll play Saturday, then we'll get on the coach, go to Carlisle on Tuesday and get, get that one out of the way. But the boys love playing games. But like you say, Saturday, Scunthorpe is the most important one because it is the next one. Obviously, they love playing games. I dare say you love organising training sessions and getting the work into them. How much is there sort of the balance that you have to sort of maybe shorten training a little bit or give intense sessions with plenty of information? Mm. This week's been perfect, obviously, with a, with a free week. So we've been able to, to top up and condition the players and, and make sure we get the right t tactical element um, in, into the sessions. But when you have midweek game after midweek game, then it becomes more of a sort of a, a play a game, recover, play a game, recover. And the tactical side of it is more analytical in terms of a little bit more classroom. Your goals are being really shared around the team. Is that something that you'd prefer rather than one player being prolific compared to everybody else? If you haven't got somebody that's scoring 30 goals a season, then the best way to deal with that is to, to share the load around them. And those kind of strikers are invariably cost you a fortune so if we can share the goals around to, to spread the load great and I suppose it means that it keeps the opposition guessing in terms of where threats come from yeah I think the way we play it makes makes us you know a little bit dangerous because of the way we play and we have a we have a number of threats in there Scunthorpe have only lost two in the last two months what's turned things around for them for you I think obviously the manager came in in the summer and he's Slowly but surely, surely he's putting a stamp on it. And you know, when you look through their squad, they've got some really good players, and they've got a, a manager that knows the level, being successful at this level and the one above. And I'm sure that with that combination, with Paul and his staff and the players, come the end of the season, I fully expect them to be in and around it. Very good then to see actually for once, not necessarily for you, but for the game, a little bit of patience actually being shown in a manager. Well, it's imperative. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any coincidence that uh, the the clubs that have a clear plan and a clear structure and a clear idea of when it, where they want to go have stability uh, within their structure and staff and players. And actually, you've got that here. How much has that helped you over you know the last couple of of, of years when? Yeah, certainly in the first year in the Football League, there were tough times. Of course, but you have to have that clear plan and focus of knowing where you're trying to get to, and it doesn't happen overnight. You know, supporters always will always want success, and they want it yesterday, but that's not always the way things work. So at our club, we know where we, we're going, we know where we're trying to get to, and we know what we need to do. And I think to get continued success... You have to have that stability. Injuries, how's the squad for the weekend? Um, it will be the same squad as last Saturday, uh, plus Matt Mills. And how's Elliot Freer progressing? Elliot's back training. Um, Saturday might be a little bit too soon. Uh, finally, Mark, Macclesfield, um, we see things going on there and um, their players at the moment say they won't play against Crewe this weekend. What's your take on the situation? Well, I can fully understand the players' point of view. Christmas has come in, they're not getting paid. You hear certain things through, through throughout the game. Obviously, we hear stuff that's going on that, you know, they're not getting paid and getting messed about. So you can fully understand that. And 
you just hope that the AFL sort it out quickly because what you don't want is you want the competition to be fair you know you don't want a youth team playing against one team and then putting a full strength team out against another because that really does open a can of worms so let's hope the AFL is swift and thorough and <coughs> sort it out and the amount that there's been this season how big a worry is that for the game in general I think it's a worry but I think people now know that you have to get your house in order hopefully the EFL have learnt and, and and they're doing their due diligence on him, on who is running running the clubs Thank you, good luck Thanks, Mark I know you're obviously looking forward to Saturday but the FA Cup, FA Cup draw was made on Monday there's a big carrot if you can get past Carlisle Yes, it's, it's quite a local one for us it's a championship club a brilliant stadium um, good, good, you know, an ex Premier League team from, from last year. So it'll give us an opportunity to pit our wets against a, a top Championship team. But obviously, we've got to get through first. And also, you've got four Welsh boys in your squad, so it's an extra incentive for them. That's right. Um, I'm not sure any of them are Cardiff fans, but no, we've got a tough, a tough trip to Carlisle and a, and a tough game first. Just briefly looking back to last Saturday. Uh, you brought your subs on. Were you, you're always saying subs have got to make an impact. Did you did you feel your subs did that for you on Saturday? I thought they gave us an impetus, but we didn't produce that bit of magic to to score the goal. But when you analyse and look back at the game, my my personal opinion was that the game could have been over at half time. Yeah. Looking ahead again then to Saturday, uh, what do you expect from a Scunthorpe team? How how will Paul Hurst set his side up? Um, they'll be difficult to beat be very robust, they'll be very well organised and uh, with sort of Lee Novak and Kevin Van Veen up front they have a they have a big threat so we have to play well. Yeah there appears to be quite a, a lot of League 2 experience in that squad. Got a good squad of players and got a good manager so like I said I fully expect them to be at the top end of the table um, come the end of the season. Yeah. Just looking forward to January, now is the time where you're going to be picking up papers, reading websites and seeing you, you linked with various players. How, how does that make you feel as a manager when you see names pop up? I mean, there was one this week, the Aldershot midfielder, uh, uh, Ethan Chislett. I don't take any notice of it, Ash, to be honest. I know what we're trying to do. Obviously, Rich and myself will discuss where we think we need to strengthen. We'll, we have targets in mind, and, but that's always changing in terms of who comes available. Players that you might think are going to be available might not be available by the time January comes. So we're quite laid back about it. We know what we need to do and, and we'll get it done. Yeah. Just finally, one, for, one more from me. I just want to ask you about the A team and bamboo, bamboo shin pads this week. Have you managed to break a pair yet? I'd love to be able to put a pair of shin pads on Ash now and play again, but um, I can't. Um, but no, it's, it's great. Obviously, um, the boys, quite a lot of the boys are wearing those shin pads, so um, yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. Okay, cheers. Thanks.